Free League recently released the solo rules for Dragonbane. I figured we'd take a look at them, so let's get into this. Welcome to Solitary RPG. The Dragonbane solo rules was a standalone release from Free League to backers. And I don't know if moving forward, if these will actually be added to the main rule book or the adventure book. I just hope it's not going to be like they did with Lord of the Rings and only be available as a PDF download. And it's not going to be published. It's unfortunate, uh, especially with the Lord of the Rings uh, rules, that they never published those um, because they put so much effort into creating these gorgeous layouts and then we print them out on regular paper and they just fall flat so hopefully these will be included in the kickstarter in some sort of a print format but as of right now if you're a backer they sent this out as a separate download and that's what we're going to take a look at today so when they created these rules, they actually created these rules for you to run one character, which is a really nice feature. It's not one of those solo rules where they're like, yeah, just run three or four characters. You'll be fine. Play the game. Have a good time. No, they actually put a lot of thought and effort into creating uh, solo rules for just running one PC. But they do talk about running this as a cooperative game, which you can do. Just no GM. And these rules will still work. First thing we're going to talk about is creating your solo character. What they're really saying here is you're going to follow the normal rules as in the rule book. However, if you're you're going to give your character an additional heroic ability. Um, so if you're a non-mage character, we'll begin with two heroic abilities and a mage will start with one heroic ability. They also talk about avoiding heroic abilities that are reliant on other PCs because you're playing your by yourself unless you're doing cooperative play but if you're just playing the one character make sure you avoid any heroic abilities that re require you to have another pc available also if you're bringing in a pc from an existing dragon bane game and you do have a heroic ability that is reliant on other characters just swap it out so they're just giving you the information here about creating your character They've included two really good heroic abilities for solo game. Army of One has no requirements, costs no willpower. When fighting alone, draw two initiative cards and keep both. You have two turns each round. This is a really good heroic ability for solo gaming. Just to give you that little bit extra advantage in an encounter um, to help you out. So that's really all that is. And then Soul Survivor. No requirements on this one, but it does cost three willpower points. And when adventuring alone, you may push a roll without suffering a condition. This was one of those things I was probably going to just do anyways uh, with my solo games. Because that that's kind of has a really negative effect in the character. Um, so I was just going to kind of do that anyways. But now we actually have a heroic ability for it. So I like that. Then we're going to get into the core t uh, solo tools. One of the things you're going to notice reading through these rules is everything's really short and concise. They're not getting a lot of big examples. They're not going into a lot of detail. It's almost like they wrote these rules for people that kind of already have a good concept of solo gaming. Um, they're just very concise. Um, the fortune chart here, what they're going to talk about is down this fortune chart here. This is your oracle, but it gets a little deeper than that. It's, you know, your yes, no number so how many things are you encountering the scale the power the quality and the reactions this would be like npc or monster reactions um, and that's what they're talking about here and then they get in you know real quick you know first consider framing the question and then roll on the chart so think about how you're going to ask your question just a little bit of good advice that you should always be thinking about and then they just give you some really brief examples about, you know, is the passageway guarded? That would be a yes, no question. And then we get into what they call tipping the scale. So basically this is rolling on the fate chart with advantage and disadvantage. A little bit like how Mythic uses the chaos factor. You know, things are going really bad for your character and using Mythic. 
and you start, you know, adding or subtracting to the chaos factor, depending how things are going. And it changes the result of your question. Same thing here. Maybe if things are going really bad for your character at the moment, you roll with disadvantage. And maybe if things are going good, you let them roll with advantage. But it's just giving you an idea of just rolling 2d6 and taking the better or worst results. If you don't like any of this, if this is just too much for you, they put in this really short paragraph about keep it simple. Uh, you can just roll a d6 on a 1 through a 3. It's Your answer is a no, negative. Um, or lower scope on a four, five, six, it's yes, positive, greater scope. And a one or a six indicates extreme results. So it's just a simple D6 oracle, and you could just use that. And another really short but to the point kind of concept, keep it moving. If you're playing your game and you come across some, an idea, like you're just rolling and something comes to your mind, you don't, you don't have to roll on a chart. If you have a good idea, just use it and move on. That's all they're talking about here with keep it moving. But if you're looking for inspiration, if you're if you're running into that roadblock, they have an inspiration table. So here they talk about the inspiration table, but then the table is on the next page. It's a simple D20 roll. You have actions, attributes, and things. So you have three different categories for each result. And what, what are you looking for? Are you looking for an action? Are you looking for an attribute? Are you looking for a thing? Or you just roll and start taking the words and make something up. That's all it is. It's a simple inspiration chart, and they give you a quick a little example here on how that would work. Then we come to dragon and demon effects. Um, there's a little bit of a typo. This is the first draft, so I'm sure they're going to get com community feedback. There'll be edits. They'll add more information to these rules as they move forward. But it does say here, use the table below to inspire the effects for dragons and demons. Unfortunately, that's the fortune chart. The table they're talking about is on the next page no big deal i'm sure they'll fix it but what they're talking about here is when you do roll a dragon or a demon you should add to your success or failure and they give you a chart to do that so just because you have a critical success or a critical failure if you just want to add a little bit more you get a simple d6 chart to roll on either one to add to that story really nice touch and i really like it and this could be used in regular games as well so don't don't let this solo rules packet fool you that this is only for solo playing you can use some of this stuff in your you know regular gm'd type games managing npcs and monsters referring back to the uh, fortune chart and talking about their reaction here and then it goes on over here talking a little bit more about NPCs and you know using their skills or their attributes roles um, they should be kind of limited uh, to only things that are affecting you directly so an NPC isn't going to have to roll for everything they're only going to have to roll if they're what they're doing is affecting you and that should be the only time they roll otherwise just let them do whatever they've got to do give them you know freedom to do their thing um, but they give you two examples here of simple, you know, a minion and a boss, and also talk more about how you can find other examples of NPCs and all the other books that are going to come out with the game. Here it goes into handling NPCs and monsters in combat. So they're still going to draw initiative cards, just like everything else. When you're fighting a monster, you, we already kind of have a chart to use for monster attacks and that's in the main rule book and that's one of the features of dragon main that i think is really going to be great for solo gaming because we roll on a chart and the monster has a pre-programmed attack which is just going to offer us some of that variety in our narratives and our games that we're playing solo but here we talk about npcs and they've created a cool npc attack table so Again, I like this. This is fun stuff. But you kind of have a melee attack, ranged attack, sneaky attack, magic attack. And this just talks about, you know, when you know, you're going to roll on it and you have different things that are going to happen. One through three are going to be pretty basic. But as you go up four, five, six, they get a little bit more aggressive. And uh, this is just a really nice touch for the solo rules. Then don't forget down here, there's just a little blurb about treasure decks. Uh, you know, sometimes if you're running a published adventure, it's going to tell you when to draw for a treasure card. When you are rolling solo, the dice may create a story or create a, an opportunity for you outside of the published adventure. 
And if you do something that you should gain a treasure card, just pull a treasure card. That's all it's talking about. Here we're going to talk about surviving solo play. So the first thing it's really going to talk about is resolving failures. So whenever you have a failure, you should think about what the outcome of that failure should be. Is it going to create a new complication or hardship or does it block your way forward? Just some basic information, really short to the point. Then they give you some little examples for you to kind of just get an understanding of how you may want to handle certain um, failures. And that's all they're talking about. And again, if you're unsure of your options, because sometimes you may be in a situation where you have a few different options. They just talk here about, you know, rolling a D6. If you get a one through three, it's your first option. Four, five, six, it's your second option. Really just giving you some good information on how to handle those failures. Suffering damage. You get a nice little chart here for, you know, if you have something that would create damage, mainly a trap or maybe something else in a dice roll and you just want to try to determine how much damage you're going to take. You have a simple D6 roll and you have some damage that you can take. And then right after damage, we're going to talk about healing. So one of the things in Dragon Bane that I like is there are ways of keeping your characters alive after they go to zero hit points. All this is giving you permission to do is to make those rolls yourself without having to have another NPC available, which I was just going to do anyways, but they're putting it into rules now. And then facing combat. This is really good information that people should think about when playing solo. Combat is dangerous and PCs die when they have combat. So it's really talking about, you know, really think about what you're doing and maybe avoid combat if you can. You're only one PC. So, you know, fleeing may be an option. But if you are going to get into combat, really think about the environment that you're in and there's if there's any way that the terrain or if there's any tactical advantage you can have over the uh, encounter use those and really give yourself that advantage in combat and those are the basic rules so not only did we get solo rules for playing dragon bane they actually gave us some adventures that we can run solo which again thank you very much for doing that uh, it's called the chapel and the wolf. So basically it starts out with just some narrative information that you're going to go to the breach and the breach is basically a, a location site and you're going to go diving into dungeons and things of that nature. So that's what it's talking about. Not a lot of information is given, which is great because it is meant for you to explore, for you to discover. That's what solo playing is all about. But you are going to meet Stone Gaze, and he, you're going to have a little narrative information introducing you to the location and things that he might give you for your adventure. And then we're going to flip over here. We have information about Stone Gaze. Then we're going to talk about the mission. So really what this is going to cover is navigating waypoints. So all of the missions will have certain points of interest, which are going to be location, dangers, or encounters. These are waypoints, and you use those waypoints for navigating through the, the, the mission or getting out of the, the breach, which is uh, another set of rules that we'll talk about later. But some of the waypoints are unknown, so they talk a little bit here about how to uh, take those unknown waypoints and add some content to them because the breach is not... Kind of mapped out you don't have um, any kind of real information to go on they kind of really talk about how the breach is abstract and that you could just use a flow chart of the waypoints you know just marking down these important events and findings it will prove helpful again when leaving the breach then we're going to talk about the mission threats it's going to carry over to the next page but basically you're going to use a d6 and whenever you have a significant delay or if you create an opening for a threat by not doing anything or failing a roll, you're going to roll, rotate your D6 up. You're going to tick it up. And once you reach six, whatever your threat is, is going to happen. Um, they actually give you a cool little chart here for some other threats if you want to roll on that for maybe your own adventures. Um, but some of the missions actually have the threats indicated. 
if you have, if you roll a demon on like a time sensitive tr uh, task, like you're trying to get in and get out within a certain amount of time, you may advance the dice two times. So that could really speed up your adventure. It seems like the D6 is going to be quick. It's They're not meant to be very long adventures. If you wanted to make them longer, obviously you can use other dice. You can go to a D10, a D12, which doesn't get a lot of love in the RPG world, so give it some love. Um, you could go D20. I made a little note here about uh, using the system I created in Dead Mall for longer adventures, which I might explore a little bit further with this. But it does give you a clock to put a little bit of pressure on you for your game to just keep things moving forward, keep advancing. So now we're going to talk about leaving the, the breach, which is basically you're going to go dive into the breach and you're going to come back out. And it gives you some basic information on how to do that. Really, if nothing's stopping you, you're just going to come right out. But if you've got some dangers, you're just going to make some rolls on awareness or sneaking to see how you fare. If you fail, you're going to have to uh, overcome those dangers and move forward. But here, this box that I kind of marked out, if you can't get back, let's just say there's you've, you've fled some certain dangers and you need to go another route, this is kind of giving you some instructions on how to do that by rolling a D4 plus 2 in the set number of waypoints for the adventure. So if you had 5 waypoints and you roll your D4 plus 2, you're going to add that. And that's just basically tells you how many more spaces you have to go to reach the surface to get out. And it's all described on page 8, which we'll take a look at in just a second. Here we talk about gaining experience. There are some specific rules for solo playing that for gaining experience that are a little bit different. It lays it all out. It's pretty straightforward stuff. Taking a break. So let's say you're in the breach and you need to get out to resupply or something like that. There's a little town called Outskirt, which is a short journey from the chapel that you can go to. Uh, you could also just start out from Outskirt. You don't have to you know, follow the guidelines here and the rules. You can just sit at the tavern at the outskirt and go into the breach and go exploring and looking for treasure if you wanted to it's kind of up to you and because of that you have a way of generating your own custom missions so they really put a lot of thought into giving you everything you needed all these little tools so that you could put together a really cool solo game for yourself so here we got you know creating your own adventure you know setting your objectives i wrote a note here about using tome of adventure which would be a great book for uh, creating experiences in Dragon Bane that uh, you can you can run through, um, but it's just tools and techniques for you to do that. And then we have here the exploration table. So this is what we were talking about on the previous page of going to page eight, and you have to generate a bunch of waypoints in order for you to get out of the breach. You have two ways to do it. You can just roll a d20, refer to this chart and move on or you can roll a d4 and the number that you roll on that d4 you'd roll that many more d4s and you refer to this chart here for information to create uh, locations and you just go to the sub table here and you have all these sub table information for flushing out those locations so if you rolled uh, an environment number two uh, you can come over here on a d20 and you can roll on this and this would give you a word to use for your environment that you can flush out in that location. So that's what they're talking about here for the, the location tables. And then we got inhabitants. This is pretty straightforward stuff. It's a d20 roll. This is what you're going to inhabit your, your location. So I, I believe all of these are listed in the main rule book nothing stood out to me that looked new which is fine that's what it should be again here's that sub table for your location then we come into rules for scavenging so basically like i said previously if you just wanted to go into breach and go scavenging around and looking for treasure you could and they have some rules here for it scavenging doesn't take a skill check and it doesn't take much time you just kind of roll on the chart and take the result and move forward just you might find a creature when you're scavenging so it could be harmful and then they also talk about searching and this table there was 
this seemed a little bit weird. So we're talking about scavenging and we're going to go talk about searching and then you flip over and you go right to trap. So I guess formatting wise, I think that would have been better put down here or something. I just, it was very kind of odd. And then also when you talk about searching, so basically you have a search role, you're going to do a spot hidden role, and then you're going to refer to uh, your this chart here. So if you roll a dragon, you're going to roll twice on the table. Uh, success, roll once. Failure, roll nothing. And on a demon, you find nothing, but then you uh, sprung a trap. But then the traps are up here. So I don't know. It was just a, a bit of a unique formatting decision, but hopefully they switched that around and pushed that down, which would make more sense. But that's what the search table is all about. And then you just kind of resolve whatever the search is. And then you talk about traps. So this is also going to refer back to the damage chart that we looked at earlier, which is right here, because none of the traps have any information on them about what they do. You would just roll on this damage chart for the trap that you sprung and, and resolve that damage. And now we're going to get into the actual mission summaries. So during the earlier part, when I talked about the chapel and the wolf, that was one way to just do a pretty standard dungeon dive kind of experience and come back out. Now we have very specific missions that have the threats listed for you. And then they got all the different waypoints that you're going to encounter on the adventure. So these are the things you're going to go through and resolve. And then the final one is going to be the encounter or the threat that you're going to have. And you're still going to use your D6 because your threat may come up sooner. It's always possible because that's what the threat clock is all about. But you have uh, five different missions that you can run on. And they're, they're pretty interesting. And I just I like the fact that they gave these to us. You could run this as a campaign for your character if you wanted to, going through each one of the different missions. Um, lots of fun. I really like this special rule, Calling Stones. Basically, what this is, is when you meet Stone Gaze, there's going to be a stone at the chapel, and he's going to give you the other stone. And if things are just too chaotic, you know, nothing's going right for your PC, the dice are, are going sideways on you, and the adventure is just not working and you just want to call it quits without just calling it quits this gives you that opportunity to save the pc or just end the adventure and maybe go back another day you have to come up with an activation word for your stone which is cool so now you get to come up with some creative way of activating this stone and it's just going to take you right back to the chapel but when you're done, you roll a d6, and if you roll a 1, the calling stone cracks, and it's only got one more use, and then it's done. So you have to think about that a little bit. Uh, rolling a 1 on a d6 is a low probability, but it does happen. I, I know it on a regular basis. And then here's another little cool special rule called the World Breaker Reforged. Uh, this is basically a forged weapon of your choosing, so whatever you want it to be, and it's got some statistics. It's 2d8 damage or 3d10 damage when wield against demons, and it's just a cool weapon that you can go looking for. Maybe you've got to create your own little adventure, and you've got to go meet a, a smith down in some remote area, and you're going to have a special weapon made, which would be very helpful when playing your solo character to have a really cool strong weapon that you can use but you have to earn it it's not just given to you or if you wanted to you could just give it to your character and move on but then we have a couple more uh adventures and that's pretty much it and then here they talk about beyond the breach which they're talking about future plans maybe there's going to be future supplements or things of that nature maybe some other tables you can use from the main rules things of that so it's really good information. This is a so this was just a quick overview of the solo rules that came out. I'm really happy with the direction that Free League is taking with them. It's only a 12 page supplement. I'm sure it's going to get edits and changes and more information added as the product gets closer to going to print. I just hope they actually print these solo rules, not like they did with the Lord of the Rings game. 
So thank you very much for watching and have a great day. Bye.